Hi, I'm Jeff Zeig, and here I am at, again at the offices of the Milton Erickson Foundation in Phoenix, Arizona, again with another five-minute video. This time, let's think about smoking cessation. There are many people who have come to me over my 40 years of practice who have been interested in help at stopping smoking. Now, there's lots of set procedures within the literature, and we know that hypnosis, for example, can be a very effective technique in helping people to stop smoking. I don't have a set procedure. When people call me to uh, come and for a session where they want to stop smoking, I explain to them that there are a number of components. There's a pre-session component, there's the actual session where there may be three components, and then there's the post-session. And that the people who are successful are going to follow all three stages, what you do before, what you do during, and what you do after. What you do before is that you come in uncomfortable. So before you come into the session, you have dealt with, uh, put away, you've uh, cleaned out all of your ashtrays, you've put away all of your smoking material, you don't own any smoking material. I want the patient to come in uncomfortable because I want to know what is their specific discomfort. Then during the session, there may be three components. One is strategic uh, questions, one is hypnosis, and another is strategic tasks. All of these three things can be accomplished within an hour session. And the, the questions that I might ask, how long have you been smoking? What has smoking meant to you? What has smoking given you in your life? All of these questions are put into the immediate past tense, building up a momentum that the person has already stopped, and now the problem is to continue. Because when I ask the person to come in uncomfortable, they've already stopped smoking. I don't want them to come into the session and stop smoking in the session. I want to have them stop smoking even hours before they come into the session. The third part could be strategic tasks. What can the person do when they have an uncomfortable urge? How can they deal with that uncomfortable urge? How can they admit that urge to themselves, lock it together with another behavior? For example, an awareness exercise, something that they can do that obviates the immediate urge and brings another form of pleasure into their life. The post-session is equally important. I may ask the person to call me in 15 minutes, one hour, one day later, and uh, keeping contact with the person after they have the procedure is part of the overall package of helping somebody to stop smoking. So the pre-session tasks, some things that I might ask the person to do to show some motivation, to get rid of their smoking material, to switch to a less favorite brand, do something that begins to take what has been a consolidated, cohesive pattern and begin to create little changes in that pattern before the person actually comes in. Person comes in uncomfortable, and then the procedure can be to help the person to develop an imago, an image of themselves as a successful person who no longer needs cigarettes in their life in order to become comfortable. We know that cigarettes are a punctuation, they're a grammar. People punctuate the tasks that they do with smoking. For example, they build up tension, write a report, have a cigarette. So it may be necessary for me to use a self-hypnotic technique so the person has additional ways of punctuating their day because otherwise they build up tension, build up tension, build up tension, and they want a cigarette. Then um, using hypnosis, which I don't always use in every session, 
but helping the person to develop an orientation that they can do. I don't want the person to be perfectly comfortable. I want them to know that they've done something, that they've accomplished something, that they've struggled with something, and that they have accomplished something. And then a task could be that they put away for so many weeks some th amount of money that they would have spent on smoking so that they have some orientation, some goal of what it is that they're orienting to in their future. Again, the post-session tasks, the follow-up, that's something that's equally important, and I keep contact with people to be sure that they're accomplishing what they set out to do. Again, this is Jeff Zeig, Phoenix, Arizona, the Milton Erickson Foundation, with another five-minute video. Thank you so much.